here the question we have is how what type of groups do we form or do we want to form when we make a phylogeny and what we want to form is a group that includes the most recent common ancestor of all the members of that group and all of its descendants that type of group is what we call a monophyletic group we could also form a paraphyletic group, which is a group that includes the recent common ancestor, but not all of the descendants. Finally, we can have a polyphyletic group, but this is a group that does not share, do not, the members of this group do not share a recent common ancestor. So from all these groups, the one that we really want to form are monophyletic groups, and these are the ones that show us the true relationships of the organisms in those groups. A group of these characteristics, we call it a monophyletic group. So this is a group that includes the most recent common ancestor, which will be, let's say, the archosaurs, and the most recent common ancestor is this one here. And all the descendants from that common ancestor are included in the group. So if you see the shaded groups include all the branches that derivate from that common ancestor. Since everyone who derived from that ancestor is included, this is a monophyletic group. On the other hand, if we leave out some of the descendants from the common ancestor, we will be forming a paraphyletic group, and we don't want to have such type of group. Here, if we have dinosaurs without including birds, we will have a paraphyletic group. So if we look at the common ancestor of all dinosaurs, will be here. But not all the descendants from that ancestor are included. So from this ancestor, we have all these groups that derived, and birds also derive from that ancestor, yet birds are not included in the group dinosaurs. So dinosaurs will fo form a paraphyletic group because they do not include some of the descendants from their common ancestor. Going back to our familiar example, a paraphyletic group will be to say, if your siblings and your cousins and your grandparents and your parents decide to form a family and leave you out, that will be a paraphyletic group because the common ancestor of everyone in this group are your grandparents and you are also a descendant from those grandparents. If they leave you out, they will be forming a paraphyletic group. And we know that birds descended from dinosaurs. So here is the phylogeny of all dinosaurs, all including birds and they all share an ancestry and this was clearly elucidated by common fossils that had been discovered such as Archaeopteryx which is a dinosaur that had feathers and using traits from the fossil record plus uh, DNA samples looking at the relationships between mother birds and other reptiles we can see that Modern birds are the most direct descendants from dinosaurs. Finally, the last group that we can form is a polyphyletic group, and this is a group that does not share a recent common ancestor. The members of this group do not share a common ancestor. For example, if we group flying vertebrates, putting together bats and birds, we will have a polyphyletic group. Look in here, the ancestor of birds is over here. And the ancestor of bats is over here. They do not share a recent common ancestor. And although they do have a common ancestor, all organisms have at some point the common ancestor. Their common ancestor, which is over here, is not a recent one. Their recent ancestor are these ones over here. So since they do not share a common ancestor, they will form a polyphyletic group if they're grouped together. Again, to bring this to a more familiar example, it is if you decide to move in with your second cousins and you decide to form a family with just you and your second cousins, you will be having a polyphyletic group because your ancestors and your cousins' recent ancestors are not the same. You do not share a recent common ancestor unless you include your great-grandparents and everyone who derive from your great-grandparents. So this will be the only way you can have a monophyletic group. All living organisms have been classified into three main domains, into three domains. And these domains are monophyletic, meaning 
all the organisms within a domain, so in our case we belong to the domain eukarya for eukaryotes, we all share, all eukaryotes share one ancestor that was an eukaryote. So these are monophyletic groups. So the same thing for each of these domains, within each domain they each share a single common ancestor and they each are monophyletic. Now if we look at the tree of life, well, including every single organism, that will also be a monophyletic group, but you include every living organism because we all share at some point the common ancestor of all living things. This tree of life has been formed, this phylogeny, by using the sequence of RNA, of ribosomal RNA. So by comparing the differences in the sequence of the RNA that makes ribosomes, we can group organisms in one of these three domains. This shows the importance of not only looking at morphological traits, but also looking at DNA and molecular traits to see the relationships between different organisms.